There you go. All right, it's March 14th. I'm going to call the select this meeting to order. First order. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We have no public input. And no minutes. And we have no minutes, so we have to do those for the next time. Yeah. First order of business is the Go off, sir. So we have 12 building permits, two new houses, and I've done 115 inspections. 116 this year? 15 inspections this year. Yeah. Wow. It's just not that long. All right. All I have. Well, there's so many light bulbs to change. All right. Things like that. So. <laughs> Do we, we don't have anything on the board for you. No. That's pretty clear. Mm -hmm. Some little stuff to do with the town around this little rod yep. here in the ass. Yeah. 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 That one needs yeah. painted. No, that one piece of carpet was done. I know. Mm -hmm. I think maybe next year get Jen's office done and maybe some stuff out back. But there's so much stuff to do. I think that's the issue. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it has to you know, be out for a day and for us. So. She said she'd close. Which is the summer stuff. Damn it! Why? There's a whole bunch more on that one already. Okay. I think this is all. Got it. Thanks. You're away for what a week? I'll be back next Tuesday. Next Tuesday? Yeah. yeah. No issues as in hand that we should be aware of. Mm -hmm. This I can monitor the temperature here on my phone, so I turned it up this minute for a box. Okay. So there's toast here. Yeah. Perfect. Thanks, Jack. Yep, no problem. We uh, don't have these books, right? Uh, we'll do the signature file. Sure. This time for signatures and gravel packs, intent to excavate for uh, Mike Carlton. Uh, motion to sign. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Real tax levy for $1,526. It's a timber tax levy. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. This is two signatures. He's an appointment to the Parks and Rec Commission for three So Top right up top. Is that oh, a Zachary Tuss? Yeah. Yes. Recommended. I'm so moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. And next is Tom Swift to be on the ZDA. That's the appointment. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. <clears throat> Got a permanent tax credit exemption for um, an elderly person. And all of the Information is yeah, um, Kathy has approved it. Okay. Uh, so, so moved. Oh. Second. Thank you. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.
is um, an extension on intents to cut that were issued to Lance Williams. And so this extension would go until June 30th of 23. Move aside. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Rabble tax levy. And this is a levy. Wait. Is it a whole thing? Yeah. So the annual gravel tax levy on on the carpet's cut. So moves. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. We didn't get a lot of graph or a scene of it at this year. Yeah, we got it. But it's going to be the other thing. The way it is. Yeah, it's like the fee for ICU is 50 cents. <laughs> I know it's written two things. We got a price on the stoller stock sign that we asked, talked about. Right. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you guys have seen that. I have, yes. Yeah, it's last time. <clears throat> um, do you want to take action on that today or do you want to move into trial after the order? Uh, I have questions. Does the state actually own that sign? No, it's on the town road. So we'll be on. If it's facing the way it is, it's on a town road. If it was facing 90 degrees, it'd be considered state. Don't act. Right. Right away is overlap. They do. Okay. But, but we can we can adjust the placement of the sign, which I think might be a good idea on the lead shell road sign. Mm -hmm. Yeah. To get the other one's away, okay. To get away from that bush. Yeah. I mean, I'm not. Given the state's inaction on that intersection, I'm not on the inaction on the speed sign on the left side. Right. I'm not really concerned about us replacing that stop sign if we work to do so. Do we have time to do that? To do two of these? Or only one. One on each side. One on each the side. other side is quite visible. I don't see how you do. Don't be running to that one. Yeah. I also want to talk to the police or whoever goes to those accidents to see which way. Chief, you're always coming in later, so. All right. Well, we just hold that until you get to it. See what you think. Yeah. I mean, I'm in favor, but I think yeah. if we do one, we should do two. Well, and I want to make sure that we have funds for it. Yeah, I'm sure we can find that there's a sign line on the highway budget. There's also uh, still some grant money kicking around. Yeah. You feel? Um, oh, it would be good. Yeah, any action. This point. I mean, That's we've good. been accused of not taking action. Right. Mm -hmm. It would be nice to take some. Um, the other item is from Dan Bernard. Um, it's who's going to write the spring edition of the Tuffleboro Times. So it's due on March 31st. Let's see, I wrote the fall engine. You wrote the report for the town report. <laughs> Even in my ten worst position, I mean, I'd gladly do it. <laughs> yeah, let's wait until after the election. And then we should know tomorrow night. Yeah. Okay, well, we, we'll be at a meeting tomorrow night, so 
can make a decision there, although we generally don't make decisions. On the, uh, I might as well just go through all of the correspondence. First thing is um, a letter from Matt Plach, Matthew Plach, about the Carroll County Communications District Planning Committee. And it's the district agreement on bylaws, which Selectman Murray's brought in for public consumption. And we're going to vote on that on the warrant tomorrow. There's a, is this a? It's just the first page that you saw. I'm sorry. The backside. Yes. Just because Steger's doing the training. Oh, this is in-person training? Oh, yeah. It's a webinar. It, right. Okay, there's a webinar on succeeding at tax deeding put on by our former attorney, Rick Sager. Nice. And that's going to be on Wednesday, April 5th. The Department of Revenue Administration has given us the final results on our reassessment. And I mean, I looked through it and as best I could see, there was no major issue. We haven't, have we, we've gotten some abatement requests, I'm not sure. A couple, not yeah. many. So we'll go through those soon. There's a local officials workshop on April 6th regarding Right to know town governance, budget essentials, ethics, and conflicts of interest, and running effective meetings, municipal roads, and more. So, if you'd like to attend, it's going to be on Zoom or Triangle Park Driving Company. Wetlands permit notification, and this is the dock replacement that. So before Jones and Beach Engineering and Wetlands Standard Bridge and Fill. I haven't looked at this one. Yeah. It's in here. And another wetlands permit <coughs> application for cow owners. Breakwater or bulkhead. And Okay, and then an updated letter and then our response to the subpoena that we were given on PFAP at the transfer station. It was a great reply. I don't know if you get to read it. I don't know. Yeah. It's, yeah. <laughs> Pointedly. Even. Is it McLean's office? They haven't asked the state for any documentation and they're a party to the suit so until we go through that process they don't get to come to non-parties and ask us for information they're kind of recommending that we go through what we have but we really don't have the manpower to do that so it is not time of year so maybe when we get to it later i'm going to give us that there's nothing in the clear file. So we've done didn't clear with an action against correspondence. Want to get updates? I have not an update since our last meeting. <laughs> I have a pregnant pause. <laughs> I'm just making sure. I actually had a, a volunteer to be uh Appointed to the Agricultural Commission. Sue Weeks said she would be happy to do such things. And uh, that's what I have. She's, right. she's volunteering. We have a choice, I suppose. Yeah, I think what has to happen after the election and yes. after all this is we have to decide what we're going to do. Or exactly. we're just going to have a garden plot and somebody manage who gets the pieces. Or are we actually going to have an agricultural commission? Right. Well, she would be. She would 
volunteered to be on the Agricultural Commission. I explained to her that the basic function would be the, the supervising of the town guard, and she said she'd be fine with that, so maybe that would be a position rather than an Agricultural Commission, but we'll get election done and we'll talk about it. But, yeah. yeah, that's all important. Okay, that's all I had. We did get a letter from um, Kathy. Yes, we did. And did you have them read it? Yes. Okay. I did. What I did pursuant to that was had um, Cami start the business of posting for a, an administrative assistant or an administrator to see if there's anybody out there. I mean, we don't have to hire anybody. We don't have anything in her. We'd have to massage the budget a little if we're going to hire this year. Absolutely. But I think we need to know a lot more about that position if that's where we're going. Mm -hmm. She did mention that the, she's got a retirement date coming up, right. which I thought was pretty nice to inform us. Yeah. You no, know, we aren't waiting until the 11th hour to yeah, make some sort of adjustment. Um, I haven't seen the posted, but I'm going to see it, I'm sure, before too long. So, well, I'm not opposed to part time town administrator, but I want to know a lot more about it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think you have been forced on us. I've been against it forever. But I'm old, I can still change. I think that's the direction we decided to go. To. If we're well informed and we know what we're getting, what we're buying, and who we're getting, mm -hmm. then I think we can make a more informed decision. But until we find out who's out there, and as I mentioned yesterday when I was in, I don't, I mean, I could apply and tell them I have qualifications. There's no way, to, how do we find out whether those qualifications are valid or what kind of professional training they've had? So I've asked, uh, Cammy to look into that I and mean, what schools train for this sort of mm -hmm. who issues a certificate of accomplishment. The Hampshire Municipal Association. You know, yeah, she's yeah. Yeah. Information. check with them as well as uh, <clears throat> looking at some resumes that we've got in the past mm -hmm. and, uh, where they went to school. When we did what I was just like more than long ago. We did have a administrator, but in the form of um, oh, Gene Forrester. Gene Forrester, right? Thank you. Um, and she did a really good job, but with such a small operation that it, it can be personality driven to a large degree. We don't want to. I don't think we want to find the board in a position of losing the ultimate decision making. No. Yeah, well, no, no, I have to be the ultimate decision maker based on the uh, based on my experience with an administrator. Yeah. Uh, the administrator does a lot of the day-to-day -day work. Yeah. A lot of the day-to-day -day stuff that you come in and dig into. And that and that's helpful with you, with you me and I'm not the, No, no, no. I, I know where you're going, and I'm okay. I with mean, it. if if you're used to working with an administrator, <clears throat> then you have got a better idea of what what we can require of an administrator. Mm -hmm. I'm a sole proprietor, so it's tough for me to delegate. All right, anything else? Any public input? No, hearing none. I'm going to postpone this, or not postpone it. Adjourn? I mean, well, recess. recess. Recess, there we go. Yeah. Recess this meeting until mm -hmm. Bennett comes in. Or the police chief. Is that a sign? Yes. He's here. You're on. Okay, we're back in session. The uh, chief of police is with us. Uh, we've got our vehicles up right now. Uh, though the second team needs has developed some leaks in that oil pan, so we've got to get that addressed. How many miles on it? Uh, a little under 80,000. And it's, uh, for some reason, Chevy switched over to a two-piece oil pan. 
I never heard of such a thing. And a what? Two piece oil pan. Oh, it's like that oil oh. pan. It's not it's an oil pan, and it's got an oil pan above it. It's a two piece pan, so you have two sets of gaskets to deal with. Where you know. Where's the rust or the leak? Or is it's just the gas? gaskets gone? I guess. So. And the cooler was leaking. And I looked it up because I was like, really? And it's not an um, unheard of thing in those. Models. So we've got some, some work to do on that. Other than that, everything else is up. We think we're up to date on all our uh, training that we need to do for the uh, cyber security. Uh, it's required by, uh, by our company, Primex. So we're up to date on that. We've got most of our um, annual training done for the academy to for the explanation ethics and implicit bias. I think uh, I have one of those classes left to do. Stops are down a little bit. We had a radar that's, that was out. It's just got returned. Accidents about the same. Offenses. Incidents are down a little bit. Calls are up a little bit. Pretty much the same activity. Have um, still only have one application. It's up on Indeed. Municipal Association and uh, Town webpage. Yeah, we did put it, tried to get it on Indeed, and we couldn't. I couldn't because apparently she had the permissions because Karen had set it up and she was able to get it up on there somehow. So it's on there now. I looked into policeapp.com, there's a few places that use that. It's eight hundred dollars for an ad there. That's where policeapp.com oh. they kind of help manage some of the process too which I'm not sure about but I need to do um, and I do have somebody also interested in doing some part time during the summer that's about that's where that's at and the one that we spoke about <laughs> didn't materialize uh, you I haven't talked to him yet because he's still in the process for some others that he would probably take a full year. So I will give him a shout here in a week or two, see where he's at with that other rest of the process. And other than that, we've got coverage anyway. But we have you, but we still have the sheriff of state police mm -hmm. help out when, when they can, when they can on right. for emergencies. And do you have any major court time that's happening this coming spring that you know of? Uh, we should. Uh, I know uh, we have the Randy Owen case. We were pretty much all subpoenaed for that. Um, that has been continued. And then the Nick Anderson case, many of us were subpoenaed for that. Um, I'm not sure that we're all needed for it, though. I think it was one of these things where just in case they, the county attorney, they tend to subpoena everybody. And then afterwards, like, what did I have to do with that case? Uh, I'm not going to forget about it. <laughs> so. And those subpoenas require presence. It's not something you can do. Unless they dismiss us from the case, yes. Uh, those are the, and it's county, it's the superior court, so you, you don't know how long. It, Randy Owen was looked like it was going to be pretty much the sergeant after all, and it was only going to be like a day and a half, maybe, that he'd be on, have to make himself available for that after they subpoenaed everybody. Uh, we're, those are the two that, I, uh, that were scheduled that could take some time, because Superior Court, you probably know, it's, they schedule it for some time during the week, because they have to fit versus district court, which is much more, you got a time kind of expected to be there. It's a narrow window. We do have, I, I did file some motions against an attorney who filed some motions on the, our case. Um, I think we've worked that out though, but I haven't heard anything bad. So that may involve a hearing if he doesn't do what he said he was going to do, but I don't know. So we got a few, and then I had another motion on a case for next week, no, next month. So they filed a motion to dismiss, and I 
objected to that, obviously. It's just citing some babble they found on the internet, <laughs> which had no bearing. It didn't even say what they thought it said. So filed a motion just to, to object to his motion to dismiss. And uh, and that's just waiting for some other cases are pending still, but that's what that's at. So we haven't made anything. The big one will be Nick Anderson. Uh, that's the Canaan Road shooting. Uh, that's the one that's probably going to be more, very time consuming. And I really, after they subpoenaed everybody, I don't know. The subpoena people that are like, we had to serve the subpoenas, but they're like, I don't know what I had to do that. <laughs> you weren't there. I wasn't there, but I'm talking about other people we had to serve in town that just, they have no idea why they were served either, but. One place at the wrong time. Uh, they didn't even, I don't know. <laughs> so did you have a, have, have, have a chance to look at the grant? Um, from Shahid, there was information on Grant from Shahid's office that came through. I didn't see that. I wasn't that. aware of that. I'll find that and give it to you. It was going through the state. That's the state. And what was it for? It, it was pretty broad. Pretty broad. Well, I'll take so a look at it. I'm yeah. If, there's yeah, if I give me this information, I, mean, I can check with Chris Scott, who's there. Or sort of the law enforcement person, see what that was about. Yeah. I know they talked about earmarks, but that was due to the 13th. That was the stuff from Pappas right. that I gave to you. That earmarks, both Pappas and Shane could have put some earmarks in. Boy, they have some other nice name for it, but it's earmarks. I don't like cheeks and turn earmarks. <laughs> but it's, apparently it's allowed in the budget now, in the process now. So yeah. uh, that was oh, something else. They have, yeah, congressional, congressional directed funding or something like that. It's nice buzzword for it so that's that was the thing i gave from pappas which i told you shaheen also has mentioned that but mm -hmm. there's something else i'll take a look at it and see yeah, if it's it up. Well, I'm related. Um, i know there's some grants for um body cameras but so i looked at that there's a max max in part and we also one of the things that came up our tasers um Axon, our tasers are out of warranty, if you will. So if something happens, we got to replace them. And they're trying to phase everybody over to a newer style. Newer style. Yeah, of course. <laughs> New and improved. New and improved. Well, they're going to shut down support for the old one. And they claim if we get involved in an incident, they won't provide expert support for us uh, if we use the old auto warranty one. Are tasers single use? Uh, the cartridges are. They're, they're, the, they are not. The problem with the newer one is you have to subscribe to their service. Their okay. experience service, their cloud-based service, which has some nice benefits to it, honestly, but it costs money. And in my discussions with the guy from Taser, or Axon, they're called Axon now, you have to agree to a five-year commitment. And in the discussion, I said, I, I don't, you must have an escape clause to be legal in the answer. You have to have an escape clause, or it has to be on the warrant whenever a year's cost is broken down. Because mm -hmm. you can't commit a future, mm -hmm. or a future legislative body to an expense. And he said, no, there's no escape clause. I said, well, then how do I do that? And, well, other people in New Hampshire said, well, okay, but I'm telling you, under New Hampshire law, either I pay for it all once, or it has to have an escape clause in the contract. If there's a five-year commitment, they should give you a free. Well, because they're making the money on the commitment. Right, but they, but they, what they do is they break down the cost over five years, so it isn't so it's such a big. So it's a lease. Or rental. Well, I like at least to own with five years. So it's five years, it's in the house. You gotta buy a new one. So we, because they're, and, and in their defense, they are looking at it as in five years, the technology should have changed and the laws may have changed and the requirements may have changed. So so we must have some lasers kicking around. I have tasers, but what I'm saying is they, they wanted, 
you need to switch over to a new one. And yeah. It was going to cost a lot of money, and I also felt the five-year lease wasn't necessarily, it's essentially a lease, if you will, wasn't viable without an escape clause. I can't even present it to anybody, so I didn't even, I couldn't even look at it. They also they don't give you the option of purchase? Oh, you can. You can buy it right up front for one price, but that's okay. like... Without the five-year commitment. Right. But that's very expensive because you're paying for everything, the tasers and the storage and every five years of expenses up front. So they still get you. Right. That, that's what the five years is about, make it seem more palatable to do it over five years. But the problem, and that's what we had before was a taser insurance program they call it. But it's, when I started to get into the, and there was only like, Fifteen hundred dollars and included your cartridges. Every year you have to shoot some of the cartridges and stuff. So and the cartridges are expensive. But now you have to commit to with a newer one. You have to commit to um, their data storage, the cloud storage. So what's the benefit? That it's uh, supposedly more effective. It's um, supposedly safer. Again, this marketing too probably. The benefit to switch it to the new one, a couple of things. One, it live updates. As soon as you put it in to the, it's rechargeable. You, and re, as soon as you hit it to recharge, it downloads the data and sends it up to the cloud and it's stored up there and you can find it. Right now, we have what data? Data, the data on usage, testing, all that. We're supposed to portally do that, check our, check download that's been checked and download that's when it was used. So we can show whether it was used like it was supposed to or somebody claims I haven't used it and then you got, well, how come you have all these discharges here? Cartridges, you know. Cats. Huh? Cats. Yeah. So, you, so you're supposed to have a tracking history of that. The advantage, of, and the ones we have now, they're not rechargeable. You have to buy new data, like, uh, data or modules it's a battery so like does it tell you what you hit and how much electricity or whatever went in there? Uh, it does not on ours the newer ones might do something like that sure. because it has it has more data that they store that more data points that they're reporting how much electricity went how long did just we have how long the discharge went. that's sort of stuff but and it's always kept up to date right now ours if they update the software for it. We don't get it until we get a new battery. That's how they distribute the, the updates. So it's, um, anyway, right now I've, I've decided to stick to what we got and just run with it, but it's something we're probably gonna have to be stuck and looking at. But again, they, I, I said, well, what if we don't pay for that? What if next year we don't pay it? And they're like, well, you, you don't have a, then you'd be obligated to pay. So we, we can't under New Hampshire law be obligated to pay Unless we have both well, yeah, no. They also offer their camera system under a similar plan, as why well I was kind of asking some questions. Of course. Um, is there any liability to the town by keeping and using the older ones? ones? Yeah. Uh, I don't believe so. <clears throat> in fact, some places, there's actually a place in Florida, and I think there's a town in the county that, oh, that I necessarily want to emulate some of the stuff. But anyway, they do have some that have been refurbished, same model. but. After so many years, they're supposed to be put out of service and get a new one because they, but there are people that are running over on this and there's no, I don't think there's any liability to it other than they may not provide yeah, some I think support. You can, I think you can sidestep the uh, elected board restriction by putting it on a warrant article. Yeah. Because we do have Right. That's, that's the thing, it, but I mean, it to be obviously thing. talking to him this year, that wasn't a, an option and I was, right. and they're trying to pitch selling and swapping us. Right. You just can't put it in the operating budget. Yeah. So I, I, anyway, that's something that maybe next year down the line, we have to look at. And like How said, often have you used your tasers? Probably over the years have used them myself. Basically, the twice I pulled it out, people gave up afterwards. Put the dot on them and they, then once the handcuffs were on, then they were back to being mouthy again, but it's like, okay, you had to change zero. But uh, the other, I think we've had two other, two actual deployments, maybe three. We had one where somebody, 
our officer was rustling with somebody, he couldn't get to his, but somebody else could avoid theirs and from another agency. So we've had probably in the probably 15 years, we've had um, actual deployments where we've discharged cartridges, not for training, maybe three or four. Yeah. But it's, um, yeah, I'd say probably three, I think, is what we've had. And it's been a while, fortunately. You know, we don't get that much, but it has it has helped. Like I said, one time I know I had one guy drunk, thinking he was going to try and steal my cruiser, and he started coming towards me, and I told him, turn around, he wasn't, and I pulled the taser, he saw the dot, and he turned around. And then when the other officer showed up and cuffed him, then he went and started saying, take these cuffs off, and he had his chance, but... but well, <laughs> I mean, it's better than a bullet. Oh, definitely. So, um, yeah. Other than that, uh, so the taser, and I know this grants for the body cameras, but they all require some sort of match. And my concern with body cameras is staffing because it takes time to run them and administer them. Make sure you're following the law properly. The law in New Hampshire is several pages long with what you can and can't do. If you don't follow it, there's a bunch of consequences that could happen that you might be violating the eavesdropping law if you don't follow it. You might be, you have to immediately delete them if you don't follow the law. You can't even review them and have them for even impeachment purposes if it's not. Yeah, so this, if you don't so follow the stages. You can, moving on. Yes. Do you meet with the local chiefs? Yeah. Okay. Let's put the word out. I mean, I know we don't have the staff for it, but I don't want Wolfburg to have a monopoly on the resource officer. They can't have the monopoly on the resource officer in a school district composed of all these other towns. So come up with a program, if you will. So school resource officers, right now they have one in the high school. Mm -hmm. They have another one that part time that helps out with the middle school. Um, and larger, that's where your problems are, right? I mean, those are the kids that are our elementary kids. So every once in a while we have a few things, but first off, we can't charge them. They're too young, most of them, right? And secondly, mostly it's, it's council to deal with it. Um, so school resource officers from that aspect, as far as dealing with the kids, it's really there. Um, they have one, they have one a little bit, and obviously the warrant article to kind of expand that one a little more, but... Uh, I just see it as a revenue source for Wolfboro, which is not fairly distributed with the rest of the towns that are paying for it. So just put the word out, you know, I know you don't have the staff to do it. Right. But there may come a time. Yeah, so the, the key thing, that I try and communicate there is that um, if it involves Tuffman Borough, keep us in the loop on it because sometimes they deal with stuff that... But then you're just dealing with the group trigger. Well, well, or if some that's kid that's the, acting that's up that's not the issue I'm bringing forward. They could, huh? That's not the issue I'm bringing forward. Okay. I'm bringing forward the issue of if the school district in the form of taxation to Tuffman Borough is going to pay $70,000 for a resource officer, then we should have the ability to provide that resource officer just as full for those. That's all I'm saying. Right. Yeah. Well, it'll be out on the internet before you know. <laughs> I'm sorry, go ahead. You're all set. Traffic control. We have the information we need to post a solar powered blinking light around stop signs. The four corners. That would be the, one of the candidates. Now, what we what we were talking about is, do we post both sides, both Durgan and Ledge Hill? But which is there a predominant side that the well, Ledge Hill is the worst? It's always the worst. Uh, we have we did have one in Durgan recently. The last accident was somebody coming from Durgan. Okay. But almost almost every one of them is somebody coming up Ledge Hill mm -hmm. that it's it stop. it's the first time. Most of it's the first time. For that person come up with show. I think if I had time I've been here, I think I've had one, maybe two, that involve people that have been here enough that they've gone to that that intersection several times. 
most of them it's the first time through and they I, I yeah no that'd be great because I think that's a great tool I've seen them in other states and, if it, the, it's no question that, that the blink and stop sign is a good idea, but so you think it's a good idea to have them on both sides? Yes, yes. Okay. But it's just, if you're <laughs> saying we can only do one, I would do lead shell side. But both would be great. And I, I saw them uh, last summer, I saw some down in Mass. What do you mean we can't do it? This must comply with manual of uniform traffic control devices, which is what all, in order to be enforceable, they have to do that. And that was some of the argument in the past well, you know, it's going to comply. Well, and, they, and I don't have yet to get a res reply to my letter asking for a blinking caution stoplight. Yeah. Well, I, 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 yeah, I did have, I did correspond with the, they, so when I contacted Senator Bradley, he contacted the commissioner, went down through the line to the district engineer, uh, Nancy, I can't her last name, over in Guilford. She contacted me. And she said she was going to go through the correspondence that there's been over the years, reference that intersection. And uh, I haven't heard anything back, but I also directed her that really the, the yeah. selectmen are the ones. Well, you might remind her of the other two that I mentioned yeah. Sugar Hill, which is a private road, right. Ball Peak, which is a private road. I'm looking for a public intersection, yeah. highway and street. Uh, no. uh, McConkie's on the transportation. Committee. Wow. Do, do, do you think that's a good avenue? Absolutely. Anything to help. We'll reach out to him. Can we go to Phil or do we have more for the chief? I'm good, Richie. I'm okay. good. You're up, buddy. Okay. We feel bad. <laughs> the architect of our police station. How are we coming? Um, well, I haven't heard anything back from USDA yet. Okay. We're kind of in the holding the path on the you submitted ninety five percent. Yeah, the ninety five percent was submitted it's like two and a half, three weeks ago. Yeah. Maybe a bit longer. Um, and I asked if there was any chance it could be <laughs> looked at soon. And bearing in mind he wanted to have an answer before the tomorrow night. Well, tomorrow night. Yeah. Um, and the response was you yeah, had like sixty days. Or something like that. I'm going to look at my calendar. Because <laughs> I'm pretty confident that Lawrence needs to vote. I don't know why, I should, why we shouldn't be. We're not asking for any additional money. We're just asking for a commitment right. on the signs. Um, I mentioned a, a grant thing that came through my email that I didn't fully read, which might apply. For that additional money for phase two, if you will, the the machine's office. So I'll look into that as well. That one that you forwarded to me. Hmm? Is that the one you forwarded to me? Uh, no, I think that was a Pappas one that I sent to you, and it's already about Pappas. Yeah. Yeah. I was saying, I, I don't know. You said she has something else too. I don't know. I, I'll look yeah, it seemed more infrastructure than anything. I was looking at it at, for the Union Wharf project as well, yeah. thinking that additional money is always good to have. So no design elements that need to be addressed? Um, not really, although I think maybe after the, obviously if it's a positive vote, then we really want to start putting together the bid package quickly as we can. Obviously, USDA is going to have input on that as well. Um, in the interim, I did mention the RFQ. The request for qualifications. Right. You can do it two, one of two ways. The uh, USDA, USDA is okay with either. You do an RFQ as a request for qualifications and that has to be open. And then you can select however many bidders you want from that list and you know you've got them in advance. And mm -hmm. then you don't have to go out to an open RFP. Okay, so you're pre qualifying. You're pre qualifying, yeah. Um, and and then on the good side, that also gives you an in, uh, so some idea of how much interest you're going to get. Right. And it also gives you qualified candidates. You know, you can go through the weeds picking out somebody who's just built a house last year. Right. Who wants to build a police station. If you do an RFP, you have to treat every one of them equally. <clears throat> so. Yeah, you have to make the assumption of what you're doing. 
on the downside is the vote tomorrow you might want to just move straight to an RFP. I, was, I should have mentioned it earlier but I wasn't sure what our what the USDA outlook was on that and when they got back to me I, I forwarded it but it was kind of late to process and get it out before the vote. It was kind of I recall it's kind of yeah it's okay I guess not, you know what I mean it's not it wasn't a hundred percent it said it was okay if it was done a certain way I thought it was yeah it, it, it has to be open yeah. um, you you have to you can send notification to, to contractors you want to know about it but you also have to advertise it just like an RFP right um, and but they did verify as long as it's open and you follow effectively the same requirements of an SFP, then you don't need to do both um, open. You can do the second one. Right. Just, yeah, you can mm-hmm. just be to the qualified communities. Right. So who do we have for a construction manager? Do we have Cobb Hill or no? No, no. I mean, I, I, my understanding was you're going to go out to, a, a, to bid for a construction general contractor. Okay. Um, I don't know that you need a construction manager at this point. Um, you'll obviously pay extra for it. There are some advantages to a CM, but the size of the project and you're right. We're more or less ready to there's a little bit of putting together the paperwork for a bid. Um, and in that respect, maybe it makes sense to go out to the RFQ well, but you might have, I don't think it'll take that long, but and it doesn't hurt. Well, at least that would give us some sense of the interest. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sorry, RFQ. Uh, you. Okay. And what do you guys think? Well, like you said, the size of this project, I'd be between, uh, you know, we don't know if you're going to be here uh, next year, but between me, Guy, and Jack, I think the three of us would be able to yeah, manage. Figure it out. I think we could figure it out. Yeah. And vote. Yeah, it's just the bigger parts, the um, heat, electricity, and I got to move in. And are you going to make I was going to say, oh, you know know somebody might know something about plumbing and electricity. Yeah, good for the general contractor to bid on 100% of the project. I think, you, no, I think that's the way to go. Just have one uh, GC rather than subbing it out individually to individual contractors. Yeah. Let a general contractor. I don't think you would get USDA funds if you did, if you went to individual and yeah. tried to GC it they, They'd want to have at least somebody in charge. Right. And we, 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 we raised that question. question too, is right? Yeah. With Jack's qualifications, with the construction manager, they were okay. But were they okay with a GC if we had, you know, clerk in the works too? Well, how did that come about? How did that get resolved? I remember they wanted a GC, but they thought that we could do the clerk of we could be the clerk of the works when we went to cm route um they accepted that jack could be the clerk of works uh, as well, a town yeah. employee mm-hmm. although they wanted to see his qualifications um, right we had to get his qualifications to them so they could sign off on him i don't think that would necessarily change with the gc but so just start uh, asking um clarify for me when we put out an RFP, we look for a turnkey building done. Yes. Okay. All done. Yes. So we don't have any decision making on the elements that are going into it or the bids that come in. Well, there's two ways to do it. You do an R. You can do a. Um, a forget that. All of a sudden, I'm drawing the blank. There's two ways to put the bid out. One is for a fixed sum. One is to do. Uh, cost plus with a GMP. You can do both of those with a GC mm-hmm. as you could with the CM. Um, there are some benefits to the fixed price, although if, it, if, if the paperwork's not perfect, yeah. it'll in- invariably be change orders. If you do the GMP, then we, you can work with the builder to like, if something mm-hmm. comes in lower, get a credit for that to go that can go towards other stuff um they have to provide all the cost plus back up to show what the building actually cost uh, but i just a little you, more can flexibility you, can you do cost plus with a not to exceed uh, that's what gmp is okay, okay. Guarantee guarantee price. Price. Oh, okay. Yeah. 
Uh, yeah, my, yeah. my concern is with a, with a fixed price, is that takes you out of the picture. Is it, I mean, the contractor is just going to look at anything that architect doesn't like as a change order. I just see it becoming a real argument. Um, I can't say that wouldn't be the case, yeah. um, but I, I mean, you know, the cost plus, then you're in the conversation as well. And that's what we need you to go forward. It's, I don't know that it's that different. Cost plus is, gives you a little bit more flexibility moving money around mm -hmm. or, you know, if, if you decide, well, we, we don't want to do this element. The money still stays in the project and can be used for something else. With the uh, fixed price stipulated sum, it's you can still do it. It's just a lot more convoluted. Um, I don't think really in terms of our role it would be much different. Um, I guess which which is which would be better for us? Which I know when we earlier times when we looked at some of the design builds, there seemed to be some ideas of, well, if I cut a couple switches out, like we went to Wakefield years ago, they had all their lights on one switch. So that, you know, and, and you know, so that any savings that they could save, obviously, didn't go back to the town, they went to the contractor, the, the design build, some of, the, that was a concern anyways, raised his watch. Is there advantage one way over the other? Well, yeah, that's the the fixed the fixed price. Short of any change orders, that's what you're paying with the GM. And it, and if you you pull something out, you change order out, say walk off mats at the front door or something, then that gets pulled out. But if he saves money on a product, you don't see the benefit of that. Right. I mean, uh, I just go back to the jail over there where they wired it with aluminum wire and then pull it all out five years later. And it, it's just, well, the contractor saved a lot of money on the project that he put in his pocket as opposed to it being a choice by the commissioners or the construction manager, which they didn't have. Or the architect yeah i'm not sure what format the contract was but that that shouldn't happen with either of these they had a clerk of the works i thought what was they, that they could have but I'm, I'm, that was design you know, build I thought. it was it's design good. build they had clerk of the works and 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 trust me 20 years later i'm still struggling with <laughs> yeah. the shortfalls of having a clerk and, and clerk of the works is didn't work yeah well. if, if we have jack that's one thing but i don't see a lot of honesty in that trade just talking as well they work for you they and, and, and right. you can do the same but thing you with... need to know every single step if that's what it's going to be and that's what we hire people to do that's what i want you to do right well in, in, in our role would still would be the same whether it's the clerk who works or not right. in some respects our job would be a little easier because we can't be there every day right you're hiring a clerk who works he has to be there every day i don't know what how long it really right. when you do your work. inspections it's is this built to the design that I drew? Right. And that's what we're looking for. Yeah, and a good clerk of work should be doing the same thing, only he's yeah. going to be into the granular detail. Yeah. Seeing stuff that it's might get covered up between my right. visits. Yeah. yeah. Um, in terms of... I had something else I want to say. Not it gets worse. <laughs> it is getting worse. Um... We'll come to you. <laughs> and we're going to get a question tomorrow night. I'll let, let it come to you as we go along. Tomorrow night, we're going to get a question, I'm sure, about phase two. We've already been questioned, or I was. I have been too. At candidates' night. When is phase two happening? Is phase two all designed? Is How is it integrated with phase one, if you would? So if we could have sort of some stock answers to those questions going forward, that would be nice. Well, if you look at the plan, there's obviously areas that have taken out completely. So mm -hmm. there's no weight room, there's no EOC, there's only one office. Management office right. for the chief, there isn't supervisor. 
We're getting there, right? Yeah, supervisors. <laughs> yeah, and it's supervisor and supervisor. It's some other spaces, storage. That was right, the storage right. space. The the locker room is much reduced, and I'm expecting some feedback, pushback from USDA on that, because making that fully ADA compliant is going to be tough at that size. But maybe they'll let them fly. I don't know. Um, so those areas are out completely. The one. <laughs> The one sort of, I don't know if you noticed in the last edition revision, there was sort of a, a little bit reappeared. Right. So that's Chief's office uh, now create a small space for storage and an, a little small IT room for the first phase because like, we've lost the IT room in the second phase. The, all the parts that were taken out can be put back in with minimal demo. Obviously, there's a wall going in that some of that wall is going to have to be taken out. Right. It's where the, air, the rooms kind of cross that line. Um, but it's something that could be built. And the design, these would be wiring and plumbing, will accommodate that piece of wall coming out. You just cut the door right? or the, do we have to rewire that whole wall? It depends on how much you want to spend in this phase. I think we, we can certainly have it bid as they're prepping for the phase two okay. and bringing wire, lot, drainage, water lines, everything to a point where they're capped. Um, I'm not sure there's going to be a huge benefit in the electrical part of it. Obviously, just make sure the panel's big the, enough. The panel's big enough, the service yeah. has to be good, all that. But the wiring is all going to be going in through yeah. the roof void and then into the wall. I'm only really concerned that if, how much of destruction is there going to be of infrastructure of the building that we're currently building. So phase one is going to have how much infrastructure destruction to open it up in phase two. I know phase two is going to have its own wiring and plumbing, but are we just taking saws all to the wall and cutting a hole and adding on, or, or is it more extensive than that? Imagine you're not going to put windows on that wall. Right. The hallway's going to dead end at the wall. Actually, that becomes the closet. Now. That becomes the closet. <clears throat> That's where the IT is going. So the, the, the bathroom will end up being a little bit bigger in the first phase. Um, so the wall to the bathroom will get shifted in. That section of the wall will get demoed. The section of the wall between <coughs> in the Excuse middle me. of the locker room, that section of wall will get demoed. That wall, the structure has to be changed a little bit because mm -hmm. we're not going to have the opportunity to do the trusses as originally planned. Um, so the, there will be a bearing point on that new gate, that gable will be created in this phase. So we don't, we can't take that wall out completely. Right. So we're basically going to be punching holes through it. Um, that's going to be the extent of the demo of the, of the superstructure. Plumbing, plumbing, obviously anything under slab will have to be brought to the edge of the slab. There's nothing, I don't think the second phase has any plumbing to it. The shower room. But we're putting that in the bathroom. Yeah, but I think that was a part of the bathroom across the line. So, I mean, there isn't much, it would be just water yeah, for drain. Yeah, I didn't think there was even that because it, we moved that into that bathroom. Well, the, in the first phase, there is no shower in the back, right? There's no, there's no shower room in the first phase. We moved the shower to the larger ADA bathroom. Right. That's why I thought we wouldn't need a shower in the second phase. Because but that moved. bathroom will get smaller, so it may not be enough room for the shower. Right the next you two pipes out, or actually three, because you got a, a waste. Right, hot golden waste. I, um, I heard you say that the locker room you're concerned about not being ADA compliant. In a police station, how ADA compliant does the locker room need to be? Well, actually not ADA, it's ABA. ADA. 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 Yeah, because that's a requirement. That's you compliant as they want it to. Want to. Okay. Well, the ABA basically says everything has to be. ABA. ADA says everything has to be ADA compliant, basically. It's ADA yeah, counts percentages. Right. Yeah, but again. So you need to be able to swing a wheelchair in a locker room in a police station? Yep. Can you see yourself? I mean, do we have wheelchair to the police that's officers? That's the difference between ABA and ADA. Not yet. ADA, you can have some areas that are like 
as long as you have a ADA compliant area, you can have another similar area that isn't ADA, as long as you provide it. You know, you buy it someplace in the building. ADA says as long as you provide it in the so building. You put a lot ABA, of everything has to be provided. That's too much. I mean, just well, a lot of you mean if they don't go with the plan as it is? I, yeah, I mean, I, they, that's our ADA compliant locker. You'd have to create, I think you'd have to create a enclosed space to say, you know, say legitimately this is an equivalent locker room. Um, oh, they have to have an equivalent locker room? That's how it's... <laughs> right, it would have to be provided similar accommodation. Uh, I, I mean, I, I think, like I said, I just want to be, be aware of it. Hopefully they're going to work with them, but I haven't had any feedback yet on that. So I'm not entirely sure. Um, and there's no way to move the locker area if that's the only area in question up against the wall that's going to attach to phase two. And then it is, phase. that's where it is. Okay, just tell them we're going to expand it in phase two. Right, and they and they have the original plan, so they right, can see that. I mean, the alternately, in the short term, if we go to smaller lockers, we might have sufficient room. Well, that would be my kind of backup plan. I'll take them back and say, is this truly easy? So it's just a matter of inches. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Feet. <laughs> but the, these are the, the, the normal lockers are fairly sizable. Yeah. They, I would think it would be more like a, you know, single, narrow, tall locker per person, something like that. I don't know. Yeah, how that's going to well, work. How many lockers do you have going in? I think it's three. three. What was it? Three or four. Three or four. Mm. And one of them would have to be ADA compliant. Um, and it may be the case that maybe we do the one ADA compliant full locker in phase one, and the other lockers are temporary solutions until phase two. Mm -hmm. Well, let's see what they, let's see what USDA has to say about that. And are you following building material prices? They don't seem to be. They're not as, dropping. No, they're, they're not, not going up as fast as they were. Yeah, we just did a project with a state. Went out to bid to. We've been working with the state on fire towers since 2014, renovating them. And this last set went out with two of the watchman's cabins getting renovated. The watchman's cabins came in at $1,500 a square foot. Wow. The renovation. Well, <laughs> they're not happening, needless to say. I know that availability of doors and windows and things like that is still not good. It's, it's better. Better, but, yeah. but not good. 1500 a square foot for these cabins? Were they remote? And yeah, they, they were there. <laughs> I think that they only, only got one bidder, and they're out of Portsmouth, and they're not an inexpensive bidder. And I suspect that they just assume they're going to helicopter everything in, whereas other projects, the contractors were more down to earth, so to speak, <laughs> and managed to work on the ground. So the whole thing's going after you bid. But if you don't get a lot of interest, that's the problem. You're always going to have at least one high bidder. If you don't have somebody who's more aggressive than one. Yeah, I'll do it if the price is right. <laughs> Which is always twice as much as that needs to be. So, yeah. So we should have, we should schedule something. Or I, you'll get a phone call Thursday morning about how the vote went. But after that, I guess we need to have a meeting about scheduling. You're going to put it out for bids. But we also want to start thinking about this guy mentioned, you know, do we order the windows? It's going to take, you know, 10 months to get them or however long they're taking. Yeah, there's certain elements that can be <clears throat> resources. We have, yeah, we can. If they come in too early, we got to store them somewhere. But no, we've got the sure that's 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 storage that's container up there at the, right. at the transfer station that Parks and Rec has. I mean, what, some room. Make it work. Yeah, we'll find a place. So when stuff. do we have to make a decision on the RFG or RFP and 
when would that be good to send, start that process? Well, if you do, if you like the next action item. Yeah, I think if you're going to do an RFQ, you don't need to go out for so long because it doesn't clearly it doesn't take as long to put the qualifications together. But it has to be advertised, it has to, and then send out ones direct to ones you would like to be bidding. Um, get the response and review it. I, I don't see that happening in less than three to four weeks. So but, there's, but there's no reason that it can't go out now. Well, that's right. Yeah, it's just, it's just, you, just you were waiting for an answer for somebody for something. Uh, no, when I, when, I, when I sent that to Cammy and she discussed with you, we could have, if we could have <laughs> gotten it together, we probably could have gotten it out within a week or so of that. Um, but it, it, it was probably too late to actually get those responses back before the vote. So it kind of fell through the cracks at that point. But so do we want to, let's, let's take a vote. Cause if, if there's no meeting next Monday, I mean, we don't want to push this up another couple of weeks. No. So I, th I think I'd make a motion that when power is built to put out an RFQ, as soon as practicable. As soon as practicable. Practicable. Practical. Practical. Either way. <laughs> I second that. Any, any discussion? No. Uh, negative. I'll second. Did you second? Yes. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. So we'll. So I think we could probably have it ready to be sent to the newspaper at um, the end of the week. Yeah. Um, or then. Do you have a list of. Um, general contractors that uh, you'd recommend sending it to? Um, Direct solicitors? There's a, f uh, yeah, there's a few that are probably would be more on the higher end, but at least it gives you something to, who would be quite capable of doing it. Mm -hmm. um, may not be the right, the price may not be right, but at mm -hmm. least it gives you a, a comparison. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We certainly want to entertain anybody who could be qualified but locally right yeah and, and that's the in care county they just have to be prepared to do their homework paperwork paperwork that's all right and, and you would hope i mean a lot of the small contractors don't have a department specifically for right. that so but you would think if they're doing this kind of work then they're going to have an rfq a foiler plate rfq anyway so it shouldn't take too long to get that and i think if you put out for couple of weeks and you know two weeks from the advertisement so you're gonna be looking for general contractors as opposed to construction managers right although some of them do both so it's i mean and you will invariably like get paper and stone their construction managers but they have that they have crew they have the right <clears throat> <clears throat> where does it normally get put up and posted uh, I would think you'd want to do, um, obviously, a local paper, but one more of the, whether it's the concrete. It's so like, uh, the, like the associated contractors have a... Yeah. The yeah, EBC's yeah. got it. Yeah. Uh, so would that be yeah. our responsibility? You'd put the wording together and then we'll put the RFQ out, or you're going to put the RFQ out? In the past, it's been the town, but I mean, we can certainly work All right. with you. Uh, and I'll... There's, as you say, the ABC, there's, there's aggregators that you can send it to speed up the process, <laughs> but generally they're going to get a hold of it anyway. Yeah. Um, the, the, the people have prescript subscriptions to their yeah, service, they really so they, they, um, they provide that information as part of the subscription. Um, you lost me at ABC, so. <laughs> I well, just wanted to go out to as many places as possible right. to get exactly. the most effective return. Right. And I'm not sure the this room contains the right information for that. And, and, and certainly, we'll contact the list of. I mean, I don't, I don't think Cockbill are going to be in place anyway. But you know, again, it, the more you get, the better comparison you have. So I would say, my. Cobb Hill, Martini, Northern, um, North Branch, North Branch, thank you. <laughs> um, page of stone. Page of stone. All that we, we, we should certainly send notification to all of them. What's the other one? The library. Uh, 
Bowden, yeah, Bowden. And I, I would think Bowden would be good. a good fit, too. You do? They're, they're a bit smaller than elections on consequences. <laughs> <laughs> they had some problems at the fire station that should have been. Oh, did they address Bowden? And they, they didn't make any friends when we did the nursing home. Right. Yeah, three weeks out from all of the bids coming in and being awarded, they decided to start complaining. And they never said any, never did, never made any proposal. Were invited in to talk about whatever issues there were in their mind, never came in. And it was just bad mouthing with the county on the street. I just don't, I don't like that shit. That's fine. CCI, they um, right down the street. Wouldn't have to move much. <laughs> All right. So, so we have our money in hand. Yeah. Yeah, because <laughs> either way, I mean, <clears throat> then, uh, we're only asking the voters to approve a smaller building. If, and we need that for the USDA. So that's really the only issue at play. But we have the money. Okay. Are there any of these grants that have fallen out of the sky recently? That, that could be applied for to help fund well, that's why I brought up the money. It seemed like it was an infrastructure program. Clearly, there's a health benefit, which seems to uh, be the basis for all this money that's coming out. Um, I'd have to get back to you on that. I, I can't say as I know. Obviously, there's a lot of money floating about from the I don't remember what Biden's thing was called. There's, there's multiple pots of money that have yeah, um, appeared, and they're all health related to some extent, uh, especially with public safety. So uh, this is this is a shovel ready project, which a lot of them are looking for. Uh, even if they were built last year, there's reimbursements available. Right. Um, I think if there are anything out there that uh, that would fit this, we should we should be looking to apply it like what we can. Yes, I, certainly for phase two, I think that would be very beneficial. Phase one, they may be, you know, if you can get the grant applied before we actually start, well, you can get the grant awarded. Like I said, even after the fact, uh, uh, even if you've already started, uh, you can apply for reimbursements. Yeah, yeah, my experience is most of them want to know in advance um, because they're... I mean, we're not looking at that much additional cash to do phase two. I mean, let me start looking at those grant numbers. And what did we ask last year for? 400,000. Yeah, sorry, like 380 or something like that. We asked for four. It was, it was a small number, but we did ask for four. And that didn't quite make it. But it could <laughs> take up another... Two hundred thousand dollars. Yes, yeah, be great. Advance, so we can start. But for tomorrow night, the smaller design will be does incorporate everything needed to expand. Phase two will start whenever the taxpayers decide to give us the money. That's not your ballpark. That's those questions are easily answered. Right. And with the RFP, when you put the RFP when you put that together, I don't want to. Send it to Tammy to put up on the municipal association too, maybe. Yeah, right. Yeah, no, yeah. high schools. Yeah, they've got mm -hmm. last year's one job. Yeah, those oh, it's just the four of the old ones. Two more seconds. Yeah. It was in there in the minutes, right? It's not on the front. Yeah, it's there. Both of the index. Well, the index. Probably didn't say. On page 22. Page 22 is this year. Yeah, it's this year. Uh oh. It says 24 feet from the line, but. Yeah, that's the 2023 town mark. Right here. How does that happen? That's the one. 51. 
Should be in the back of Jim's minutes. I say. Yeah. I think it should be good. Order of the 22 meeting, 52. Look, it's Article 4. See, it's Al Bo's rates appropriate sum of $468,000 as additional funding for the construction of the new police facility. So it's 468 we asked for it to be here. And even 468 by the time this came out, we weren't sure if that was going to be enough. Right. But at this point, mm -hmm. When the taxpayer decided to give us more money from do phase two? Well, and just building phase one is going to give us a much better idea of costs. Absolutely. I mean, Bill's been trying to establish, you know, it's not the, the ether, but once you get people are actually excited about it. Well, the ether, he told us to have it in cost, so it's going to be Well, I think you'd be the first one to say, you can't, and we've asked him many times, you want to get us a price for Put your finger on the table. You know, nobody's going to get no price until we decide we want to do it. Yeah. Good. But they didn't build the pyramids in one day either. No. They what? Pyramids? Yeah. Well, this is a start. Yep. Got to decide. And he wants for this to win that. Just. No, well, there, there'll be opportunity to review the uh, fine details of the design after after the meeting. Yeah, I think before we go to before we go out to bid, you should just sit down. And yeah, I don't know if you can have a special meeting and take concentrate just on that or not. Or mm -hmm. certainly we can get the, get you the set of drawings. Did you get or, or we do a Friday and just yeah. Did you yeah. 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 orange to us already, or is that done? well? You copied on the set that was sent to usda and your rfq doesn't require an absolutely finished drawing the rfq doesn't need drawings at all no. we're going to give them a description of the project right and they're yeah they're not bidding they're not giving us a number at all right so it's just a interest and in ability right i have um an interest in, in discussing the hvac system there I know we, uh, in your, in the current design, there's no three phase and you've gone with long, mm -hmm. uh, mini splits, right. multiple, multiple zones. Is uh, that the only reason we're not going three phase is because of um, a larger plant would require a three phase service? No, it was the other way. The, the reason we didn't go with three phase is that there was a space for it. Concern about costs of and three phase. The monthly cost is, uh, is more expensive, yeah. but also so is putting in 12 um, HVAC units as opposed to one choke. Yeah, um, we, that was our original design, um, was a, a single unit that fed all the, all the heads, um, but it, it, it was more expensive. To do it that way? That particular system was. I mean, I can check with the NEP guys again. But I don't know that it's going to be a cheap. This was, these are effectively glorified mini splits. Mm -hmm. And they're, for lack of a better word, box in. And they are cold climate, so you can use them down to whatever mm -hmm. minus 15. Um, but the other system was, um, I'm not sure if it was four pipe fan coils or three pipe. Can't remember now, but it effectively had the ability to if one room's calling for heating and the other one's calling for cooling. That you kind of stuff is the case. VRS system. Yeah, um, and that, is, that definitely is a lot more control equipment um, required, and it, at least at that point, it was a lot more expensive. Is there a DDC system in the, in, in, the, in the current design? A DDD. DDC digital. Digital controls at HVAC, where they just are going to have thermostats on the wall. Uh, I believe it's digital control. Yeah. So there's going to be a front end somewhere. Yeah. Um, bearing in mind that the the mini splits <laughs> are cold climate, but we also have radiant heat. And don't forget, we're using propane. That although the front end costs might be more, let's take a look at the operation costs, because if having a bunch of mini splits. Is more expensive to operate 
been out on a three days single unit, that might be a consideration that we should make. Yeah. Or decide on. You mean like maintenance and all that too, right? Everything. Everything. The cost of operation. I, mean, I, know, just, I don't disagree, but we, we've we got a finite number to get this thing built. Right, right. Mm -hmm. So let's give ourselves some. Well, I'm wondering if this is, is if this what you have on the table right now is the less expensive installation, or what? that was how we that's how we got there because we certainly had a more sophisticated system mm -hmm. in previously. So you're going to put, so previously you're going to put in a more expensive system to install, but it may have been cheaper to operate in the long run. Quite are we, possibly. Are we, doing, right. are we doing this? Well. It, um, I can't say for sure. I mean, I didn't, so Phil's, Phil's directive was to save money on the project. On the installation. Right. Yes. So yeah. now we want to talk, we're going to go through this thing on a smaller scale. Now we want to talk about absolutely every element of it to see how it's going to affect the operational. Mm -hmm. As I recall, the concerns were one, the monthly cost for three phase versus single phase. And the other issue, though I thought you found a single phase was big enough, didn't you? Didn't you? Well, we have a three-phase uh, meter at the uh, at the transfer station. Right, we do it at the fire station too, but it's... We also had... We also had a grant from the co-op for like $40,000, I think, too. If we, could, we should reapply for it. But the other issue, the concern I had was that the type of system cold climate or not it's only good for 15 below right and that was my concern you have to have some kind of a backup but yeah. if you're going to be having breathing heat on the floor there's a yeah there's a backup there's redundancy in that in fact the way the system ended up the radiant heat is the primary heating source the the fact that you've got cold climate in there is because they're not hardly any more. They're like a hundred bucks more than a normal. Yeah, but if, if for some reason propane goes through the roof, and uh, you yeah. want to start running um, your, your cold climate system, it'll, it, right? It'll you know, work. You take advantage of that. It'll work until, until all but the coldest days of the year. Right. right. I'm just saying it would be silly money not to go to the cold climate, even if you're not going to use it. Right. It's not going to make that much of a difference. Insulated right. flatline breathing. I say it's only good for fifteen below. But the slab is good for three or four days before you can have a real issue with the temperature. I mean, that, I have it in the shop next to Agnes' house. And we've had 20 below zero this year. It's been pretty consistent. Oh, yeah, you've got thermal mass in the yeah. slab. And even if the system goes down, it's still going to be radiating heat. Yeah. But the temperature will drop if that system goes down. It just takes a bit longer. Um, and I think, like I said, it'd be silly money not to go cold climate. The cost between the two systems is negligible. And that gives you that level of redundancy that you can effectively heat the whole building, even if the boiler plant goes down and vice versa. So you have, you know, or if somebody wants their room a little bit warmer than the rest of the building, then they can turn on their um, heat split. Yes. Yeah. Well, yeah, you, you're using mini splits, but a VRF would be ideal. Yes. And like I said, that's where we started. The, <laughs> the, the costs were coming in a, a lot higher. I mean, I, I'll certainly speak with um, our engineers. I mean, I'd like to uh, see if there's, I'd if like these beams, you know, maybe, maybe mini splits have gone up in price um, more than the VRF. Okay. But we're, we know where I'm getting. Yeah, I mean, the only one thing, I, if we want to get out to bid as soon after the vote, mm -hmm. um, it might be who of us just to go with what we've got and then have the GC price things. Um, well, I can't not ask the question. I'd rather, rather ask it sooner than later. But, well, we're going to go through the RFQ and we're going around the circle soon. Mm -hmm. We're going to go through the RFQ first. And then we're going to send out an RFP. Right. To select bidders. So there's a little bit of time here where we can look at Yeah, this and, and I don't think anybody's going to start straight away. So we're not, you know, getting the RFP out immediately after the vote. They're probably starting, still aren't starting until June or July at best. And I don't think anybody's going to be 
wait for work. <laughs> no, right yeah. now. No, people are still lining up their work for the year. Yeah. Anything else for Mr. Bennett? No, I'm happy. Okay. Thank you. Great. Thanks, Thanks for coming. Thank you, Chief. Hello. Oh. oh. All right. I don't know that we have anything else. No, no. We have a one. Dave Jeffers. Okay, so I'm going to go into uh, China. Re recess again. Uh, <laughs> we're going to have a recess. Uh, My favorite part of school. Guy Pike is banned from the swings after the last incident. Oh, uh, fun. Okay, so. But we're back to China, Jim. <laughs> but you know what? What? Oh, we All right. <sighs> okay. All right, we're back in session. It's still high day, 314. <laughs> Running through with Dave Jeffers from Lake Switch and Planning. We're reviewing the road survey that was done about four years ago. It was uh, it was done in it was finalized in 2018. The work was done in 2017, uh, and then incorporating <laughs> this map incorporates the updates that were discussed right and a while ago. Does this have the culverts? No, no, it does not. So there's another culvert. There, yeah. It was done. This, they're two separate things. Although, uh, under the auspices of uh, T squared technology transfer at UNH and a program that's a statewide SAGE program um, that looks at infrastructure and helps communities in tracking, tracking in the case of culverts um, the, and assessing the status, the RSMS program, Road Surface Management System program, is not only enables uh, us, we went out and in 2017 and had, had a team go through and assess uh, the different characteristics of each quarter mile segment of road. And so you see these numbered sections those, those, are, those are indicating quarter mile segments or approximately quarter mile um, and those were in, in the characteristic there are about nine different properties that are that are assessed and then an overall pavement condition index based on that mm -hmm. um, and the the and the, with that we're able to map all the various conditions of roadway and we group they're grouped in <clears throat> uh, four or five different categories color coded here um, and the 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 real step, this program has been around for probably close to 30 years. The two steps, the, the two big advances that were made uh, probably now seven years ago um, were A, being able to map it and, and then, and that really is, is a, can be a very helpful tool for planning and for communicating to others, whether it's talking with a road agent, talking with a paver, or talking, communicating with the public. And the second element is that it, it has a forecasting element in it, so it can look at what sort of condition, what sort of deterioration can you expect? And 
if we put things side by side, there is definitely in some areas where work hasn't been done yet, there is some deterioration of roadway, uh, even within the four years that since the original assessment was done. But you can also, it then also has within it in the program about 20 different pavement type paving and maintenance and repair strategies that you can then say, okay, well, in 2023, we're going to, we're going, we're going to do a, a, a shim and overlay on this segment of road. And in 2027, we'll come back and we'll do some chip seeding on it because it will have deteriorated some. Um, but the shim and overlay, the shim and overlay is going to cost more than your, your crack seed um, that you might do three or five years later. But by doing that second part, you're going to extend, really extend the life of the pavement. Um, and in some cases, um, the work that needs to be done is like full depth reclamation uh, and, and some reconstruction. <laughs> and uh, and I think that's what the town is finding really needs to happen. And a lot of towns, you're not alone. Yeah. Uh, a lot of towns find that and for, uh, for whether it's because it's on, you're dealing with ledge or, or your the foundation was never really established when the roads were originally built, that kind of thing. And that can be very costly. What do you consider full depth? And full depth of record? It, it might be 12, 8, 8 to 12 or more. Um, and there are, when when it looks at full depth reclamation, there are actually about four or five different kinds of types of, of that sort mm -hmm. of um, You have a, a guide here. Um, and with that, this is the whole purpose of this is to help assist you in planning some some plan. It's not a Bible. It's not the end all and the be all. And it's not, and no, it's an observation and a recommendation. Right. And it used to be that it was a snapshot. This is it. Um, you know, you do the you do planning based on. These two extra pieces, the, the, the mapping and the forecasting, are pieces that have enabled it to become, hopefully, more of a working document. And this is an update. <coughs> right. This is an update to that. So it's not just a snapshot. We're looking at, this is what it was, this is now what it is. Yeah. And, and where do we go from there? When's, when's, last, yeah. when's the last time this was there? Oh, no. The the field work was done in 2017 uh, or 2017 2018, uh, and the we got we incorporated work that was done from 2019 20, uh, 2020 and 2021 are incorporated. Yeah, but when was the last time that the selectman saw a map? Last year, two years ago, three years uh, ago. Oh, last, uh, last year. So we get a map every year. We can. We can get it more regularly if we ask for it. Well, we we're we're finding our way through this in terms of what what works for you. It does. It does work. The this sort of static update of what you've accomplished in the last year or two, um, putting that in. We can we can do that, you know, just as a okay. That's part of our regular routine and part of the service, and that's something that you guys asked for. You were the first community to ask for that. Um, if you'd like to take the next step, you've you've got you've made some adjustments. You've, there are a couple new roads that we were 
that we would need to do a little field work to get them in there. Right. Um, you made some adjustments in terms of your strategy. You're doing the through, we're going to do the, instead of focus, instead of originally the thought was, hey, let's do work in multiple parts of town um, so that everybody's seeing some work get done. That's not the strategy that's being done these days. And so the forecast, you know, I could, we could pull out the forecast uh, and, the, and the planned strategy associated with it, but it really wouldn't make any sense at this point because, you know, some things that were said to do, hey, let's do this in 2027, they've already been done. Uh, and other things. And part of, uh, part of the problem with that work for us was getting a paving contractor that would actually work in that parameter. Right. Where he's doing a half a mile a year and a quarter mile right. a year and a half a dozen a year. It's not. So we put it back into bigger sections that we can get to economically. Yeah. And we did break out the community roads right. from the major through roads. And if we look at, and we should probably look at the original map that came through. Yeah. It was a hell of a lot more red. <laughs> can you, because I'm new, uh, can, you, can you explain the ledger to me? Yeah. Uh, uh, the, there, there was a, as, as I said, the PCI, the Pavement Condition Index, it's on a rating of zero to a hundred. And uh, the higher, if it's, if it's a, if it's in very good condition, you know, it, then it's blue. Okay, it's so the numbers, blue. the numbers are radiant numbers. Yeah. Zero to 44 being the lowest and yeah. 80 to 100 yeah. being the highest. Yep. Yeah. So this is indicating, you know, here this mm -hmm. section of these roads in uh, Melvinville. Is, is there a point system that you use to calculate your numbers? Uh, it, it is, again, it, it reflects uh, the nine different param scores from the nine different parameters um, and as well as there were we we worked with the road agent and the selectmen to get uh, local priority and local uh, well lo local importance and local uh, traffic Volume. Right. But as far as as far as these numbers are concerned, those are based off of if it, nine parameter the score. Yeah. You, the, the bottom number, the total of the score, puts it into this. That's where you get the color from. Basically, but it, there's sort of a multiplier with the with the local importance factor. Um, uh, and yeah, so if you know that, for instance, uh, Union Wharf Road is going to get more traffic than. Uh, federal mm -hmm. that's a in their matrix that they're driving this program with that's factored in so this road you know is going to wear out faster because mm -hmm. it gets more heavy traffic um yeah and you know it, it turns out that most of the town facilities are on state roads uh, but um, in some communities there are local roads that go by those and so they're going to have a higher importance but that just changes the projection not the current state right no the current state yes but this current state is going to move faster on this state. right but this is showing current states right yeah okay. yeah um and uh and i think it's been helpful i i think we've done a good job so far but it does maybe when we direct our focus we had talked about starting the up your neck project we still have to do the top coat on um surely way but there's some kind of section of that that hasn't done yet and then we've got a couple of the neighborhood <clears throat> let me just start looking at any at that at some point I yeah and future. yeah and part of the projecting on this the this does come from a philosophy of keep your good roads good. Once, once the PCI gets down below 
70 or 60. The ideal is to keep everything above 70 on a PCI. Realistically, once it's getting down below 60, you're, it's, it's really beginning to fall off in terms of quality of road. And the cost of doing repairs is just going to be, is going to be really high. Once it's getting down in, in much below 60. But once you, if you've done a, and this is just my opinion, but once you've done a complete reconstruction of a road. Oh yeah. Even if the pavement surface starts to really deteriorate, when you go back to redo it, the cost is a lot less. I mean, I, we only started not too many years ago doing actual reconstruction. I mean, I remember Dane Road did a reconstruction on that. That was a big one. So I'm expecting that when Dane Road comes from blue into green, you know, it goes, or yeah, blue yeah. to green, that redoing that road is going to be a lot less than it was in that initial project. Yeah. The same yeah. thing happened on North Line Road. So as we gradually get through these, and we're going to do a complete reconstruction on the neck, that's going to take a couple of years to get it done. And then we're going to have to do the upper part of Ledge Hill Road at some point. We've got some little drainage issues up there. So that, that's part of it. I mean, you've got some green up at the top where it's nice, but right through the middle there, before you get down here to Dane, it's, it's led to a road for a reason. It has a little <laughs> <of it. laughs> I know. All I have to do is look out in my yard. And... Yeah. <clears throat> your, your portion of the road, my portion of the road yeah. as well, is not that bad. It's not nearly as bad as up here. Right. And resurfacing that, even taking it down six inches, grinding it, it's not as big a deal as going down 18 inches or 24 inches and putting new culverts and all the rest of it. Right. So, I mean, I think given a, if you took a five year outlook, I think we could be pretty close to at least green on most of it. I think we, we could definitely get rid of the reds. And then work a little harder on the yellows because Dave's gonna turn some of those yellows into red on us if we don't press them. Or something. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So yeah, this is the this is the map with updates. It does it. I don't think it includes the work that. You did last year that you accomplished right. last year um, and that can be an update that we put in there um, I don't know if you so I, I guess part of a conversation is uh, are there specific things that you want to talk about in for this and are there things that we want to be looking for in terms of thinking about do we want to begin going for sort of an in interim forecasting uh, you know an update a, a forecast that's going to incorporate sort of the, the change philosophy to begin to give you a plan more of a written plan mm -hmm. like we did with the original forecast we gave you a 10 year 10 year you know this this room yes. does this red section does this does your computer have or your people have the ability to look at what we've done over the last six years plug that in and and then project and say okay this is the way these guys operate where what's going to happen if they keep operating that way we, yes, okay. um, and I must tell you, you're, we're sort of on the, on the crest of, you're sort of on the forefront of doing that sort of thing. Um, and I, which I, is it, somebody's got to be first, you guys, you're, you guys seem to be 
willing to work with that. Um, it's, it's not something that happens with the snap of just a couple of buttons. Um, and there's going to need to be and some back and forth. The thing is, I could probably speak to it better than I can because there's a real force for it. We've increased the amount of paving budget yeah. in the last two years, I think, was it? Yes, and that's, you gave us a schedule yeah. that recommended increases, and we started okay. doing it. Where, where I was going to go with it is maybe looking at those two years, what's the effect of that increase? How much improvement was right. there? Yeah. And, and did we budget enough? Yeah. Uh, so <clears throat> we went up, what, $100,000, I think? 100000 this year. Yeah. 15, so 15. what would another hundred thousand dollars we could project what another right, hundred thousand yes. would do for us because yeah. we're looking back at what we've done with so is this a service because we're a member of lake street planning commission uh or is this the, that we the, 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 sim the simple update you know plugging in what yeah. you did what you've done in the last couple of years or right. that that is yes part of your member service if we're looking to do a revision of the forecasting we would need to get you a scope of work to do that and we need to determine okay are we going to do field is it a full i don't think that we you're looking to have us do a full send people exactly. out in the field and and do a full <clears throat> checkup that way as opposed to let's do modeling and well, revision I'm, I'm not certain that we couldn't do that in general yeah. well i think that the um, the voters uh, would support any budget increases for paving if we had documentation and a recommendation right. from an agency such as LIPC. All right, so through the year, you know, let's figure out, you can get us the map that we needed on the plot or some idea in the last yep. two years. And then let's see if that, if that helps. You know, what, you know what I mean? I do. There's certain people out there that just don't trust our decisions. Yes. Well, there's one in particular, but... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you might worry about it. I I think if we were going to add another hundred thousand, we're going to have to justify it somehow. And having some, having documentation is important. The other thing that not to drive this meeting too quickly, but yeah. is there any way to incorporate this paving study and include the culvert in this matter? Um, we can. I can. We can look into that and what it would take. Um, because yeah, there are several hundred culverts, um, right. and we have, and we've worked with some other communities. We've never fully incorporated that uh, in the two, but we definitely heard it's, voices. Well, you said we're cutting edge now, right? Yes, you are. So let's 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 uh, because up here on the Hill Road, for instance. <laughs> Uh, we're, we've got a grant application to do drainage up there. And we've paid, how much have we paid um, Bergeron? About, wasn't it around 20 grand that we paid back for yeah. all those grant things? So we've paid an engineering company to do the work. Some of the work you could have had for us are all set and done, given the scope of the studies that you guys have done. But we needed to supply a lot of information to the, to the grid yeah. for. Um, so I guess the final is that the more information that we have on the culverts and the relationship to the paving, the better. Yeah. Then we can yeah. really right. work on it. Yes. Yeah. No point in the finish and then ripping it up again to put the culverts in. Right, right. right. And we're not going to do no, that. No, no, no. Like Wolf Road did with the North Main Street Waterline. Mm -hmm. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and you know the more they can be integrated the better yeah because um, we may find that i mean if we've got and i'm just picking this section of road randomly but if that colored survey that we have isolates two or three you know red colors that just got yeah. go and it's also in yellow i mean it, it kind of drives our decision making mm. okay we got to project there that needs real depth yep. that real drainage and yep and with light doors right and if we're going to be able to right we're going to be able to not post roads in the winter we need to do these roads right <laughs> <laughs> yeah i would also 
I, I've said it before, yeah, I mean, but some of you have heard it before, but I know that you, that, the, that you guys just finished updating the uh, hazard mitigation plan, and on that you probably identified a number of areas that are, that are prone to flooding or washout or that sort of thing. And having those identified then sets you up for the potential for getting uh, applying for funding from from HSEM that can help offset either 50 or 80 percent of the cost of the culverts. Uh, but it's not reimbursement funds. You can't expend it and then spend it and then ask for it. Then ask for it retroactively. Um, and so that's just another factor in there. Um, and we do, okay, back to the recreation here, we have taken over this road here in this development. That's Farm Pond. Yeah, and we are going to be taking this road over, I'm sure, at some point. Yeah, and that's going to probably be within the next year. Okay. Uh, this development down here, uh, but it goes beyond other that we have. But at any rate, so uh, this, so is, uh, this is all brand new, so I'm, I'm sure it's blue. I mean, our requirement is that the road has to be all, all up to 10 spots, yeah. the threshold pay for the road taker. Mm -hmm. And yeah, you already know this one. Uh, yeah, there was. No, it's getting right. Yeah. We did talk about it. You might get my vote on road closure. So we're looking at, yes, we can, under what we refer to as technical assistance, um, we can, if we get, if we can get a listing of what work was done in 2022 okay um we can update that um and the type uh, ideally the type of work and the cost of work of that work right. would be would be helpful um and that that would fall under uh ta um technical assistance and we can look into can I, shall i draw begin to draw up a scope of work for identifying steps that would to work towards a forecast for you work for towards forecasting um it sounds like you've added an extra step in there uh, no, he's combined everything, and then now he yeah. wants to tell us what, it, what we it should do. Maybe. We're not certain okay. that we need that. Maybe. Yeah, okay. we okay. don't have a road agent here either. Yeah. So, yeah. And I think if we had the updated map, yep, we can sit here with our road agent, take a look at it, take a look at what our thoughts are for 2023, and then say, hey, maybe we should do an update or, or have them look at what the last six years have turned okay you know, what's happened in the last six years okay and how do we continue okay i guess we should do that i think we're gonna, this is going to take more than one meeting because yeah. to guy's <laughs> point bob's point if we're going to go ask for more paving money in 2024 yeah. we're going to have yeah. to have justification and that's what yeah we're gonna have and and i think we need to have like a five-year plan a multi-year plan yeah, yeah. and I don't know if you want five years, but you know, at least a multi year. Yeah, plan. the problem with the five years plan, the way it started here originally, was it just wasn't workable for us. So I think if we two or three get them, well, no, I think if we can get them the way we have to operate as mm -hmm. far as our people is are concerned, they can change their matrix to say, okay, this is what you can get done in five years. Right. Using yep. newer methodology. Yep. Okay. Um, because if it doesn't kind of string together, then the moving and the equipment to another yeah. place with it, mobilization and demobilization costs money. 
Yeah, and, and each other. getting somebody to do that. Right. Yeah. Probably. And another time, they don't want to do that. They, 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 want, to they want to be efficient. Yeah. And anything that we're doing, we're, it's a, it's a model. Uh, I mean, it's a combination of tracking. Now, now we've got some of the information. We got the information that you all provided, uh, you know, 2018, 2019. All right. Uh, that sort of thing, along with the associated costs. It took a little bit of figuring out, okay, this is what they're talking about. Um, so in a sense, there's some tracking of what, the, what things have cost, but the, the beauty of this tool is it can do some forecasting and we have now some updated numbers, costs in terms of, we know that pay, uh, paving materials have right. have jumped a good deal in price and, and that sort of thing. So we can get more realistic. It's a model. It's a forecasting model. Anytime you put a model, the more realistic we can make it, the better for you, right. for communication. Right. There's always going to be some assumptions. And there's always with one of the tweaking. issues that we've had, and Guy probably understands it because he's been through a few of them, is this resistance to ch crack sealing yep. or chip sealing or whatever they call it. Yep. And I think maybe what we can get to with David's help on, on mapping is let's say, okay, you're resistant to chip sealing and you don't think it works. Our experts at Lakes Region think we should give it a try. Let's pick a road, right? And then age it out and see how it really play yeah as opposed to picking you know ledge hill road and, you know it's just way too much yeah. so but if you if you take some of these neighborhood roads for instance yeah if we redo we've redone uh surely way the color is going to change you know maybe three years from now we should see it, whatever mm -hmm. i don't i'm yeah not a paver, but you take a smaller <clears throat> localized road and see right. what the yeah. effect is as opposed to just categorically saying it doesn't work. Yeah. Uh, well, any crack filling is better than no crack filling because it just it helps prevent the water from getting into the road. Okay. Yeah. Plain and simple. That's yeah, it's physics. That's cute. I'm yeah. not so sure about uh, chip filling. Chip, chip sealing. Chip sealing. You actually do it, and I, I think we've got it at the office, the report that you originally did. Yeah. And it, really gets into the description of what the different thing modes are. Yeah. Yep. So take that out. Uh, but we, well, we don't do anything. I, I just want to remind you. You you've got you've got the full report, I think. Uh, this is not the full report. This is just a standard list of the various repair strategies that are options. All right and sort of what they cost and in certain conditions they're useful things can i keep this yes thank you um and i can get you i can send you a another copy of the uh i can send to cammy with the full report and we can have that and read through that that'd be great yeah, yeah. i'm sorry i did i would have brought a it's okay another copy if i um um, the, the data technology, I can I'd probably have it tomorrow. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I'll, I'll go home, send, I'm working from home, so I'll send it to you today. Thank you. Yeah, I'm looking at the map. I, I, I guess I'm, I need a visual to make yep. my brain work. But I look at little red sections like this. Yep. We don't need to hire somebody at the All States mm -hmm. to do that. No, there's plenty I mean, of people. Yeah, there are smaller paving companies that can pick up right. mm -hmm. these little things. And we <clears throat> never utilize that other than a couple of aprons that we've done from time to time. So I think it's, I mean, the paving companies that we have do a great job on a half a mile road or a mile road, even, but they don't like to gear down to do a Couple hundred yards, some of the same thing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I may find that we transition into a neighborhood paving company and a big paving company. Well, and if we look at the neck, for example, 
working this way would be right up somebody's alley, actually. Yeah. Because they wouldn't have to move their equipment. They'd come to that intersection, turn the corner, and go. Yeah. Yeah, I think Jim's plan is to do, well, he's doing half. So he's right. He's going to have to here somewhere. Yeah. But we really should include, I mean, there's not that much traffic out in there. No. Summertime, and then those condos that are supplied. Well, you get a handful of, of year in this, but the rest is all summer people. Yep. Yeah. <clears throat> no, I know John Hiles did. <clears throat> oh, he, John Hiles he may be up here. Where's Eagle here? Yeah. Yeah, he's not down in the middle. He's up Eagle here. Yeah, that's up here. Yeah. So at and I mean, I, I think you really should do a physical drive by on this. Um, so there are costs involved, and we'd like to keep them as minimal as possible yeah. until we decide to do a, yeah. a full deal. But I mean, we're not expecting. We're talking to you even well for you know I I don't know what your thresholds are, but uh, and I'm not I'm not in a truly in a position to be saying you know, here to do this work it would be x y and z mm -hmm. for i think the original i think the original one was maybe ten thousand dollars to do to do the full report um and that included field work and such a desktop sort of thing um then the, the when forecasting there it would be the the a lot of the cost would be in Correspondence and then sure and make probably south of the mall. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. And sure <clears throat> we have communication and meetings and are clear on what what the different materials and costs and inputs are um, and what the philosophies are. We, if we're going to do something, we want to make sure that it's meeting your needs and the town's needs. Or your needs are the town's needs. Yeah, and I'm, I'm glad we did it originally. I think we've done as well as we can as far as the plan, but it's a tool. We, we try to use it. Two brand new, or no, brand new, but two uh, selectmen that yeah. were involved in that original decision. Right. Who managed better ideas of how to implement it. So yeah. everybody's road is, is priority. Yes. <laughs> well, mm -hmm. Especially. Yeah. yeah. Well I live on state road, so I don't have to worry about that. Yeah. I, 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 do, I don't have, have to pay tax. You gotta go yeah. to Concord to get a That's chance. Because the state roads are the best road. Oh fast part of the road. Yeah. One on nine A's. Go to Ossipi on one Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. And you know I like to give the example you know, Exactly. Everybody's the road that runs in front of your house is always the worst road, and they'll let you know at the general store. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they sure do. Believe me. Um, yeah. But, and we are. How soon can you get back to us with an update? Um, things are gonna. Well, no, things aren't opening up, but we will. We will. It'll certainly be this. We'll get we'll get a technician working on it right now. He's he's on some limited time, uh, but uh, I think uh, once you get the information to me about the what the road work that's been done, you know, I certainly a springtime sort of thing. Um, and I'm hoping early spring rather than late spring. Yeah. Uh, I was thinking more like a couple of weeks. Uh, <laughs> this that'd be great, but it's not the absolute highest thing. On, I've got three other things, priorities ahead of us. Okay. I understand. We also we will do our very best. We also picked that kids, <laughs> but it's dirt. But we should probably include that. Part of Woolland Road that we took over from Class Six, made it Class Five. Give him an apron. Uh, if it for 
for this, this only deals with the paved road, pavement. I will, again, on, if we're talking cutting edge, we haven't gotten it yet, but we have been badgering, talking with uh, T squared a good deal over the last several years. Uh, because many of our communities do have a significant amount of unpaved roads, right? To, they're working on, as far as I know, they are working on a uh, unpaved road piece where it can do forecasting for unpaved road work. Uh, it's in the works, it's not here yet. Uh, which may be something to uh, be considering what's that yeah i mean because you look at some of these roads i'm not thinking Julian, but maybe Phineas graves or yeah the other end of uh canaan road where it might be cheaper to if you if you got your road surface okay maybe it's cheaper to pay yeah. it just from a maintenance standpoint from a, from the annual cost of maintenance oh, but we don't know that this yeah. Again, you're on the front end. Well, it's not easy to be the first one. So yeah. <laughs> no, it's not. And there are some question marks that come up. But if but, we could get it, let's say by the end of April, when it's yes. time in there, that would inform us a little better on our choices. We kind of made random choices based on our own gut feelings. Right. And recommendations from the road agent. Right, right. So, yeah, make sure can we get you that. I need, you need the last two years, right? Yeah, 20. Yeah. You want to have two years. Two years of paving and reconstruction. You might have to get with Jim on that. Yeah. And you don't track, well, you said things like chip sealing, crack sealing, really is it done? It'll, it'll be on his paving thing, but I don't remember him doing any of that. So it's been think. years since anybody's done any crack filling. Yeah, I mean, he'll do a, a little, little pub from time to time if it's really bad. <clears throat> really go out there and do some crack sealing as not happening. Yeah. I remember they did some crack filling on Ledge Hill Road like once probably yeah. 10, 12 years ago. But, yeah, that, you know, those, those <coughs> sort of things. Yeah, you should get with, with crack sealing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, put some little definition here. It costs 40 cents a square yard. Uh, so, you know, you've got a 12 foot wide road or or whatever uh it gives you maybe three years um and it improves your your pavement condition index about 60 percent um and there are a couple of different types of crack sealing um and um then you've got chip sealing which um it it's more costly. The lifespan is really only is about the same three years, uh, but it's going to improve the quality of the road a bit more. Um, and then you have to restripe it if it's got stripes. Yeah, yeah. That's the, there, that's the tourist code, right? Uh, but if you were doing a bonded wearing course. Uh, that, you know, you can see there's, that's more of a, uh, uh, of an operation. It's, they're rating it at a little under $7 a square yard, a good deal more than the 40 cents a square yard, but it's giving you 10 years of extra life on your, on that section of roadway. So, and that's, and they go on up. And that, let's take uh, North Lumberg, for instance. That's what we just did. Yep. So the road agent and us were so like, we need to keep in mind that three years from now, four years from now, 
something like the chip ceiling or that overlay coat. Mm -hmm. yeah. And a lot cheaper than tearing the thing up because you waited 10 years to do something or 15 years yeah. to do something. Yeah. So these roads that we've been getting to, that's uh, that would be the primary savings, I think, is if you know, yeah. did a, a chronic ceiling on you oh, yeah. I don't know if any, you want, I can't see it today because you have more snow. Okay. For example, the, uh, the, what I'll call the newer section of Brown Road that they did is already breaking up. Okay, it's coming to crack. Maybe the ceiling would save it. Or slow it down. Or slow it down at least, but it's... Yeah. Uh, seem to have a problem and they, they overlap in the middle. Uh -huh. I don't know that it's any better any other place, but it seems like whenever you get, you go one way, you come back to the crack in the middle is always one that opens right up. Almost immediately. Yep. You get the longitudinal crack. Yep. And then it crack goes down. from there and it just seems to go. And it's mostly because of water intrusion and that. Yeah. And at some point in time you need to really get into the and drainage. And even yeah. with crack filling, you can crack fill during the year and then in the winter time because you do have moisture under there anyways it still frost it heaves and opens up yeah, yeah. and then you get you, and all these cracks show up in the winter time fill in with water and then you it just worse and worse you can yeah. recycle once again back to north line room the amount of work they did in there and the depth they went to to get that roadbed ready you shouldn't have the problem that you're talking about. It should drain away. It should not have water underneath it. In a perfect world. Well, it, it's more perfect. We've spent for perfect, so I would hope that that's a mm -hmm. yeah. sort of perfect thing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Is this uh, pricing, this ballpark pricing here, adequate for parking lots as well as roads? Or is this based on doing roads uh, like a straight shot? I know it's focused on, I don't, I know it's focused on doing roads. Uh, and these, these are numbers that were, <clears throat> these numbers, the actual pricing, these numbers are a bit out of, are out of date. They need, you need a updated version of that. Yeah. Um, but it gives you an idea. But yeah, the model was just yeah. updated this yeah. summer, but I don't know. They were they were not specifically done in with parking lots in mind. And I don't know if it's going to be any different for parking lots than it is for. Um, I would expect, but I'm not an expert on okay. it. Fair enough. Yeah. What we found with the original numbers is it gives you a ratio. That's about it. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Does it really need to talk to maybe a couple more? Yeah. yeah. And the more detailed the numbers you can give to us, mm -hmm. we're we're now getting to a point where we can incorporate if you can tell us you know it's going to or if you and your paver can tell us hey these are the numbers these are the types of work that we're likely to do these are the half dozen types of work we're likely to do and this is what the paver tells us that it's going to cost we can plug those into the model and what we did pay for that work Exit. Yeah, we can look back uh, if you have specific, you know, cost receipts, that sort of thing, as opposed to saying, well, we'll do this road, we'll do this road for uh, $10,000. Uh, that, that gives us less definition. I, mean, I, I realize we don't want to be nitpicking every season thing, but uh, the better we can tweak it, the better. Okay, any other questions? No, no, we've gone uh, over a lot of stuff. Okay, good. The map is great. Okay. Updating the map is better. Yep. And away we go. But, uh, okay. Yep. I'll be back in touch with you. Very good. Totally okay. cool. Great. Okay. That's all. Yep. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Now make stay healthy and safe. You yeah. too. Take care. This <clears throat> so got all the information that you hear about us. All the doing things for the health of the line is no intellectual exercises. All right. Thank you. Drive safe. Stay clean.
Great. I'm going to, I think that was our last appointment. Yes. Before we adjourn though. Okay. Am I ordering signs, stop signs? Because it's going to take a while, like weeks to get them. I move that we purchase two stop signs, one for Durgan Road, one for uh, Ledge Hill. Do I second? Well, second for discussion. Mm -hmm. I want to say something. Yeah, well, I think we need a discussion because we need to figure out what we're going to take. Mm -hmm. um, do we have money in the sign line on the highway operating budget? We um, have money that we've never spent or very much like spent in the uh, Highway block grant? Well, the highway block grant we get every year. We got a little bit more left than that. And do we want the solar ones? Absolutely. Yeah, because we don't want to have okay. to do the way to do it. Right. All right. Well, did you have something else, Guy? No, I second it because I could see that you'd like to speak. Right. <laughs> cool. Um, well, hearing that, it's a motion second that all those in favor. Aye. 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 All right. My second question is. I thought there was only one question. I don't want to wait to see who's going to do the Tuckenborough Times Spring Edition because they need it by the 31st and we don't meet again till the 27th. Doesn't... Meet tomorrow night. We will tell you tomorrow night. Oh, you want to do it tomorrow night? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Okay. We're in a meeting. Well, I don't even know if I'm going to be elected, and I'm on the hook for doing that. I'm not going to do it if I'm not a select. And neither one of these guys should have to do it because they just did the last ones. Okay. So we'll, we have to be in a meeting tomorrow night, a town meeting. And during that, during the lull of the activity, we'll figure it out. We'll have a vote count, and we'll know. We'll know. <laughs> okay. uh, okay. So we uh, we we recess until tomorrow night, right? We don't close this movie out. No. I do it either way. If I could interrupt yeah. one more thing. Um, on a different note, but related, um, on LRPC, Lake Treatment Planning Commission, we one of the things we've been working on on the path for the past year is. A housing needs assessment um, and you may be aware fully aware of this that uh, we've got we've got the draft assessment posted on our website okay. and um, it and we're doing our March meeting March 25th or I think it is meeting in about 10 days is over in Ossipy at Hobbs Tavern and we'll be talking about that and presenting. And there are numbers, <clears throat> uh, there are numbers associated with it that can be helpful to towns along with tools for planning boards and that sort of thing. So you're talking uh, workforce housing or, or just an overall well, it is linked, snapshot? It is linked, it's an overall snapshot of <clears throat> need, need for housing based on population and um, population and jobs, uh, the job market. And there is also, uh, there are some requirements associated with workforce housing uh, and making the, uh, providing a realistic opportunity and I think actually a few years back, Tufton Borough Planning Board did a, a good deal of work in terms of provide, focusing on that. Um, but there have been some, there has been some legislation over the past several years uh, that applies to housing. So it's so, something that communities should be aware of <clears throat> if, if people are. So you could let them. Mm -hmm. When is this meeting? Uh, the 25th or 26th, whichever is the Monday, Monday evening. Uh, uh, 
So, uh, uh, and that's at like 6 p.m. over at Hofstadter. March 27th? 27th. Monday the 27th? Do you have that advertised on your website? Yes. Yes, it is. And <clears throat> that would be, and I know this is second Monday. Oh, no, right. That's yeah, the last one. That's out yeah. at four, yeah. 430. Yeah. So, well, I want to make sure a couple of people know. I mean, yeah. I, I may not go to it. You're right. I want to make sure our yeah. planning board yeah. sure. knows about yeah, it. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know really the the county know. Yeah. Should I know the rest of the, I know the, uh, yeah. What time? Seven? Six? Six thirty to six thirty. But it's on the What's website. Up? Okay. Yeah, it is on there. <clears throat> okay. Okay. Great. Um, Thanks. Thank you. All right. Do we want to adjourn this meeting or postpone it until tomorrow? Recess. I would say we recess until tomorrow night. Okay. I'll make a motion that we recess until tomorrow night at town meeting. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. When you get, when you get a mean time, so when you get a.